Welcome back to the Olive Oil Critic. I am so glad that you're here today with me diving into the world of olive oil and learning about it from branch to bottle. Today we have a really delicious olive oil to try together. Uh, this is from Francisco Gomez, which is an amazing olive grove in Spain. They have just over 350 hectares and many different cultivars of olives are grown on their property. What we're tasting today is their organic quick wall. They are a certified organic grove, although that's something I don't often look Look for when I'm buying olive oil myself um, because there's so many small groves that do practice organically and just don't have the certification but this olive oil is certified organic. They have just over 350 hectares like I said of olives and one of the things that I love about this grove is that they do everything they can to decrease their pick to press time, which is so important to making a high quality extra virgin olive oil is ensuring that the time from the olive going to the tree to the mill is as short as possible. So one of the things that they have is just the latest technology. They've invested so much in mechanical harvesting to ensure that their pick to press time is really short. It's when the olive is the most fragile and they have to make sure that the olive is well treated. It's not bruised. Everything that can kind of go wrong. <laughs> There's so much that can go wrong in that short window between um, the picking and the bottle being in the tank ready to come to us here in North America. So this piqual is um, harvested in the middle of November. So they start harvesting um, usually the Arbequina first, and then they move on to their piqual and other varieties. And the, uh, the fun part about here is that they're able to harvest in November as soon as it gets cold. So that's one of the reasons why it is cold extraction. Um, extraction happens because they wait until it gets cold. So they don't harvest when it's still hot, even though the olives are still ripening and lots of people are incentivized to uh, do an early harvest and they harvest in say the middle of September when it's super early um, to make sure that their oil is still crisp and green. But here um, at Francisco Gomez, they wait until November to harvest until it gets cold. So that way it truly is cold extracted from, from start to finish, um, which also increases the quality and the chances of creating a high quality olive oil. So now this pick wall is nice and warm. Let's give it a sniff and see what we have to discover. Mm, the tomato is so present. I feel like I just went into the garden and rubbed some tomato leaves. It's super green and very tomato forward. I got some artichoke in there as well, um, but definitely tomato present, which is classic for pick wall. Mm, creamy. And so green, the green tomato flavor is really present in the center of your palate as well. And then just a beautiful peppery finish. This one's a little bit more vitey. You've got a, a touch of capsicum in there. It just makes it very vibrant. This is super well balanced from the aromatics in the nose, the intensity all the way through to um, the, the pendency on the back of the palate. It's super well balanced. Each note has the same intensity, even though it's totally different in flavor. The bitterness is really well rounded. So you find um, the arugula, there's you know some mustard greens, even some kale in there. It's super herbaceous, um, some thyme and rosemary is present as well in amongst all of the tomato that is the predominant flavor on the palate. It's so well rounded. I love to just let the oil sit on my tongue and let it soak in. Because of the viscosity of olive oil, it takes time for all of the flavors to arrive and develop. It's not like tasting a water-based product where it just kind of slides right through and you're deciphering after. And even as I talk and aerate my palate, um, the herbs are coming in even more forward now. There's a little bit of artichoke on the front of my tongue, which is really interesting uh, because it definitely was present in the, um, in the nose. And so, yeah, it's subtly there. And then again, lots of tomato, but so many more herbs, almost an oregano um, tasting on the sides with, with the bitterness. This oil would be so tasty um, <clears throat> used with salads. I would love this oil in salad dressing. 
um, because it's so present, because there's so much happening in it, um, and because it's so green, but it has predominant flavors. Um, this could handle garlic. It can handle um, the vibrancy of, you know, mustard or maple syrup or whatever you wanted to add on your salad dressing, and it would also still be present and um, the flavor would come through. So definitely recommend um, using this as a salad dressing oil. It would also be so tasty with roasted veggies. Roasted tomatoes, of course, would just pull out all of those flavors. Um, but if you wanted to roast some carrots or beets, sweet potato, anything like that, um, I can see this being really delicious for like a roasted vegetable with a pepita salad. Um, pepitas on top, a delicious tahini salad dressing made with this oil, and then also use it to roast the vegetables. Um, maybe some black beans in there just to add some uh, protein and an oomph to your salad. Um, I definitely think this is a veggie forward oil just because of its tasting notes. So. Uh, yeah, it would be so tasty for all of those things. Now I want to go make lunch. Um, <laughs> this oil is uh, is a favorite. It um, absolutely is a high quality extra virgin olive oil. And I love that the, the capsicum finish is still present um, on my palate and, and hanging out there, which is lovely and just so warming. Um, this oil feels like I'm being given a big hug by a tomato. Uh, so yeah, enjoy. There's lots of possibilities to use with this oil.